Hey guys, what's up? We're looking at finding the maximum minimum values of a function subject to a constraint. So this is called constrained optimization and what we need to do here is use the Lagrange multiplier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the gradient of f and set it equal to a constant, in this case we call it lambda, times the gradient of g. So what is f? f is the function x cubed y to the fifth. g is right here, so this is g of x, y. So g of x, y equals x plus y. So actually this one's uh, not too bad as far as g goes. So let's take the gradient of f. So gradient of f is, I'll put it in a column here, um, derivative with respect to x is 3x squared y to the fifth. And then partial derivative with respect to y is going to be 5x cubed y to the fourth. And then we set that equal to lambda times the gradient of g, which in this case is just 1, 1. So here the derivative of g with respect to x is 1. Derivative here of g with respect to y is 1. All right, so that gives us two equations here. So let's write those two equations. 3x squared y to the fifth equals lambda. And then the second equation, 5 x cubed y to the 4 equals lambda. And then also we have the equation x plus y equals 8 fifths. So that's our constraint equation. So we always have to keep in mind the constraint equation whenever we're solving um, the Lagrange multipliers problem. So those are our equations. To solve the system, I always look for a weakness. And this weakness here is that both of these expressions on the left are equal to lambda. So what I can do is just equate those two um, sides on the left. So that'll tell me that 3x squared y to the fifth is equal to 5x cubed y to the four. Now there are a couple of things that could happen here. Um, Whoops, this should be an 8 fifths right here. There are a couple of things that could happen in this equation. So this equation could be true if x is 0. So the first thing that could happen is maybe x is equal to 0. The second thing that could happen is maybe y is equal to 0, and then that equation would be true. Now, what most people would have done originally is just cancel out x squared on both sides and cancel out y to the 4 on both sides. But you can't do that if x is 0 or if y is 0. So that's why we consider those two cases separately. The third case is if maybe they are non-zero, so x and y are not 0, then we can cancel out and we can say 3y would be equal to 5x by dividing both sides by x squared y to the 4. So that would tell me that in the last case y would equal 5 thirds x. All right, so now we solve each uh, case. So in the first case, if x is 0, this equation tells me y would equal 8 over 5. So y would equal 8 fifths. So my first critical point would be 0 comma 8 fifths. Similarly, if y is 0, then x would be 8 fifths. So 8 fifths comma 0. And then the last one, let me plug in y equals 5 thirds x right here into this last equation. So x plus 5 thirds x would equal 8 fifths. So that would tell me that 1 plus 5 thirds times x would equal 8 fifths. So then 1 plus 5 thirds is 8 thirds. So 8 thirds x equals 8 fifths. So multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. So multiply over here by 3 eighths. And that would cancel it over there. And we get x equals 3 fifths. So x equals 3 fifths. Now if x equals 3 fifths, then 
substitute that back right here, y would equal 1. So y equals 1. So we have three critical points here. We have uh, 0 8 fifths, 8 fifths 0, and then 3 fifths comma 1. So these are our three critical points. So let me write that last one up here, 3 fifths comma 1. And now we need to compare the function values for each one. All right, so we want to look at the function value f of 3 fifths comma 1. So that would be plug this point, 3 fifths comma 1, into this function. So we get 3 over 5 cubed times 1 to the fifth. So that's going to be 27 over 125. So that's our first function value. And then look at the next function value, f of 0, 8 fifths. Well, that's going to be 0 because x equals 0, that's going to be 0. So then last, f of 8 fifths, 0 is also going to be 0 because y equals 0 here. So the max is 27 over 125, and the min is 0. And that is the solution to our constrained optimization using Lagrange multipliers.